So welcome to this video. This is our video where we're going to be going over uh, reading, which we are going to use to teach you how to do different types of questions, like yeah. matching headings and mm -hmm. yes, no, not given. In this video, we're going to be going line by line to go over all the, the vocabulary and grammar that you may find difficult. So with that said, please make sure you watch this after you do the question videos. We've linked yeah. them here. Yeah, you can see all the videos here and the links in the description to find those. Yes, do those first because if you do the this one first, you'll find those really easy because the vocabulary is all yeah. really well known. And you, you want to simulate the test as often as you can because uh, otherwise you might have a big surprise when you go into the exam. Okay, so go look at those videos uh, if you haven't done already. If you have, great. Now let's talk about some vocabulary and grammar that you're going to find useful. Welcome to the IELTS ground. I'm Mike. And I'm Phil. Remember to like and subscribe. Yeah. Okay, should we get into it? Yeah. Let's do it. Guys, we're going to be going through this paragraph. I'm going to read the whole thing first. Uh, if you hear any vocabulary or grammar or sentence structures that you don't know or find interesting, please feel free to write those down in your vocabulary notebook. Mm -hmm. You should have one. If you don't have one, go to the shop right now. Get one. <laughs> Pause this video. Yeah. Go to the stationery <laughs> store and get one. Yeah. Okay. Welcome All right. back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is an excerpt. This is not a whole reading. Okay. These are parts of it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Esports have taken the world by storm. They are found on ESPN, the sports network, and are seen as a serious professional goal by many young people. But it is not only young people who partake in it. People in their 30s and 40s often game, and if we include mobile games, many older people also pass the time this way. So, yeah, so, um, well, first of all, I think uh, eSports, mm. that's um, what's key vocabulary. I don't think it's actually, um, if I was reading this and I didn't know what eSports was, I don't think it would really stop me understanding mm -hmm. the text. And that being said, there are, so on the IELTS exam, jargon is never included, or if it is included, it will be in a glossary at the end of the text. Esports is actually would be a word that you would see at the bottom that's defined. Yeah. So uh, jargon, just in case you know, th this is vocabulary specific to an industry or, or a to field. A field. Yeah. So for example, uh, let's talk about internet. So SEO. Do you know no what idea that what that means. Search engine optimization. Oh. So if you're not into this, and someone said SEO, um, you might not know exactly what they mean. Like yeah? this guy. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah, esports. So we're talking about electronic sports, right? Is that what it's, the E yeah. stands for? I believe so. I never really thought of what it actually stood for. But it's, it's sports where you're viewing people playing video games. Mm -hmm. A really good example of this is League of Legends. I know some of you guys probably play this game. Um, I, I haven't played this, unfortunately. Well, the eSports is huge. Yeah. Like million dollar industry. Yeah, I've heard this, yeah. Um, like, yeah thousands and millions of people watch professional gamers play this game. That's eSports. Let's, let's not pretend we're both gamers. You know, we're, well, we're definitely in this category, right? M one of us is a gamer. Wow. One of them is uh, not quite. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so left out. Okay, so eSports was definitely something. Yep. Uh, it's not, it, like you said, you'd probably get the, the uh, glossary at the end. Mm -hmm. So the, the other uh, phrase that jumped out at me was taken the world by storm. Mm. So this is a very good phrase. Do you want to explain that one? So taken the world by storm means that it's become very popular over a short amount of time. Yeah. So Which is true in this case. Yeah, the whole world is into it. Mm. Okay, so um, vocabulary. Also, there was another phrase that jumped out to me. Partake, to partake in something. So this is uh, to do something or to become involved. Uh, so, for example, I don't know, someone might say, um, I, I like to uh, drink, um, I don't know, green tea. Do you partake? <laughs> it's a little weird in this context, but yes, this is, the, this is a synonym. Yes. yes. This is how I would use it, because I'm quite posh. 
It's true. <laughs> Most British are. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, uh, one last one yeah. for vocab, I think, would be pass the time away. Yeah. To pass, pass the, the time. time this way. Pass the time. Yeah. So to pass the time, uh, to do something in order to... Uh, for f in for your free time. For f yeah, for fun. But it can also be used um, if you're waiting for something. And you're trying to waste time. Yeah, yeah, to pass the time. That's yeah. very true. You can use it that way, yeah. What about grammar structures? What grammar structures jumped out to you? Well, we definitely have one non defining relative clause. Mm. And non defining relative clauses are used to add some extra information about a noun. Um, but the difference between defining and non defining is if we were to take out that part followed by which or who, the sentence still makes sense. Right? Mm -hmm. That's a non defining clause. Yes. Relative clause, I should say. Okay, so um, which one in particular? Now that I look at it, maybe it's not a relative clause, but it does add extra information. Yeah. Um, it is found on ESPN, comma, the sports network, comma. That, the sports network, is extra information. You mm. can take it out and it's perfectly fine. But I thought you were talking about this one, but it is not only young people who partake in it. Yeah, that's a relative clause and it is defining. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, by the way, one more... It, this is a little bit of a trick um, to help you if you ever want to see if it's defining or non-defining. Non-defining always have commas, and you never see them in defining relative clauses. So if you're ever going to add some extra, extra information, make sure you add those commas. Yeah, that's a really good tip, actually. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so should we move on to the next paragraph? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. However, there are many decrying this hobby, claiming that people are not only playing the games for fun, but because they can't stop. They say that these gamers are addicts and need help. They point to, the, to people who spend their lives in internet cafes, and the rare cases of people gaming to death as proof of their claims. And truth be told, they are not entirely wrong. There are people who are addicted to this pastime and there are other negative effects. Okay, so let's go through it again. Let's talk about vocabulary, mm -hmm. and then we'll move on to talk about some grammar structures. Okay, so I have to admit, there's a word in there that, although I'm a native speaker, I don't think I've ever used this one, and I'm not sure that I've really heard it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and guess what it means from context. Mm. Yeah, Because you can do this at home, you can do this when you're uh, in the exam. So the sentence is, however, there are many decrying this hobby, claiming that people uh, are not only playing these games for fun, but because they can't stop. Mm -hmm. So the word for me, decrying. Now, when I heard that, I thought he'd made a mistake. Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. I'm perfect. <laughs> so if I look at it, I'm thinking, firstly, is it positive or is it negative? So if I look at it, it says at the end that, uh, but because they can't stop. Mm -hmm. So this for me sounds like an addiction, which is negative. So I've got to guess that decrying is something to do with um, talking about something that is not good, I would say. So I think it's from the context, it must be something, I would say it's basically putting the hobby down saying that it's not a good hobby. Is that right? Am yeah, that's really close. Yeah, yeah saying something is negative. Uh, saying It's like ringing the alarm. Yeah, okay. like Or beating your chest and saying, oh, this is terrible. Yeah, so uh, denouncing, maybe? Yeah, denouncing yeah. is a good okay. word. Okay, so yeah. now you might think I was pretending there, but seriously, I did not know that word, and I'm a native speaker, so it happens to us as well. You can see who reads more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's got a higher vocabulary. <laughs> But the point here is that if you don't know a word, try and use context. And a good way in this way is positive or negative. Is it, what kind of does it mean? And I mm -hmm. thought it was a negative connotation. So denouncing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So any words in there that you didn't know? Well, <laughs> considering I wrote it. <laughs> um, however, there are some vocabulary that, you know, some of you guys may be a little bit lower level. Addicts, yeah. what does addict mean, so, if you are an addict? 
So this is connected to what I said before, addiction. Mm -hmm. So if you're an addict, it means that you there's a substance, or in this case, a uh, activity that you do, but you even if you wanted to stop, you can't stop yourself. It's a compulsion. It's something that's beyond your control. So um, popular addictions are uh, smoking, for example. Mm -hmm. um, drinking alcohol. Drinking alcohol is an addiction. Also addictions to uh, drugs, both uh, medicinal and non-medicinal. Mm -hmm. But in this case, you can also be addicted to an activity. Um, like video games. Yeah, some people say they're addicted to um, exercise too. Uh, we're, we're not those people. <laughs> That's true. But um, in those cases, they're using it hyperbolically. Like, they don't actually mean they're addicted to exercise, but they love exercise so much, they say yeah. they are addicted to yeah. it. Um, and by the way, in your vocab notebooks, one thing you should do is make a chart. There are often words where they have the same root, and then you're just changing the word form. Yeah. When you learn a new word, try to learn all of them at the same time. Yeah. So an addict is a person who is addicted to something. An addiction is just like he said, when you can't stop doing an activity or a substance. And the verb? And the verb is... To be addicted. To be addicted. You know, I am addicted to video games. He is addicted to smoking and alcohol. That's not true. Neither of those things. <laughs> Tell us who you believe in the comments. <laughs> Okay, so um, any other vocabulary we can pick out on that one? Um, rare cases. Yeah, I, I was just looking at yeah. yeah. That's a nice a little um, collocation there. Rare cases. What does it mean? So um, a case, an example of something, and rare, it doesn't happen uh, very often. So for example, um, let's say there are rare cases where Michael knows more vocabulary than Phil. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Or there are rare cases where Michael tells the truth about Phil. N need I go on? <laughs> so does that mean that I often tell the truth or I don't often tell the truth about Phil? Which one is it? I, you don't often tell the truth, if I'm using this correctly. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> now there are two more, uh, maybe three. The next one is truth be told. Truth be told. Well, this is a good expression. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's. Um, I would use this to kind of. You almost you've said something before, and then now you're sort of giving. You could be giving the opposite meaning, mm -hmm. or you could even just be um, moving on to another topic. I could mm -hmm. use that in that way. Yeah. So read it to me again. What? And truth be told, they are not entirely wrong. Yeah, so here you're sort of uh, you're backing, admitting up, that the, backing up what you yeah. said and s saying it's, it's true. Yes. That's a very good expression. Pull it in your books and steal it. Use it correctly in your writing. And here's the next one. Not entirely wrong. Okay. Now this is, this is a, well, I can see this, why this is in the reading. This mm -hmm. could be quite misleading. Mm -hmm. Not entirely wrong means it's not 100% wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes they it's, are a little right. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> it's right. It, that's quite confusing as a phrase, right? Mm -hmm. Good use of that one. Michael. You may be seeing one of these. You may have already seen one of these in one of the other videos. It probably tripped you up as well. Yeah, that is distractor country. I would say. I think so too. So, yeah, here's an, the last one. Pastime. Pastime. This is a. Is this a noun, verb, or adjective? Well, it's a noun, right? Yeah. So this is a synonym for hobby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we we saw a word earlier that was really similar to this. Pass the time. To pass the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's where it comes from, I imagine. Yeah. 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 So, um, and a, a very good um, expression here, the national pastime. Ooh, that's a great collocation. So, what is the national? It's pastime? weird because it's baseball. It is baseball. <laughs> he knows his Americanisms. But, but I hope so. <laughs> but the thing is, people don't really watch baseball anymore. So it's like no yeah. longer the national pastime, yeah, but everyone knows the national pastime. It's true, is... isn't it? It's gone from basketball, um, baseball to basketball. Yeah. yeah. And, or football. Football is also huge. Oh, American football. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. yes. It's true, yeah. What, what are some of your pastimes, by the way? Um, I <coughs> Drinking. <laughs> Well, 
I was going to say I enjoy brewing beer, and <laughs> this is not doing me any good for my reputation. Uh -huh. um, I, I quite like watching movies, for example. Okay. This is a pastime. That's another great pastime. Yeah. Ooh, I think this is a word that you could probably use on your speaking tests. Yeah, definitely. This is this is slightly, I would say, a higher level than hobby. Hobbies. Oh, yeah. You know, your your lower level students know this quite well, but pastime, yeah, definitely yeah. a higher level student would use that. All okay, right. so Moving on to the, to next, the one. next one. Ready? I'm as ready as I ever will be. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> He's not entirely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of your viewpoint, there is no one reason why people game. It varies from person to person and can be healthy or unhealthy. Some people do it as a way to relieve stress. Others do it as a way to escape, diving deep into these fantasies, which is objectively dreadful. Yes, some do it because of the above mentioned affliction, but others do it to grow closer to their friends. For every negative reason, there is a positive. Good, yeah. Okay, there were lots and lots of really good phrases in there. So if we go Thank through, you. yeah. So um, well, the first word, regardless, mm -hmm. I think this is really good. Um, often people make mistakes with this, even natives. They try and put a prefix on it. Irregardless. That is so wrong. If you've ever heard that or picked that up, that's wrong. It doesn't make sense, right? He's a grammar Nazi. Like, he, he, he loves to make sure people follow the grammar rules. And so, like, I'm not going to lie, I would probably say irregardless. Really? Yep, but okay. this, this would make him very angry. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just wrong. <laughs> so, regardless, so in, the phrase here is regardless of your viewpoint, meaning it, it doesn't matter what you personally think, mm -hmm. this is still uh, true, it's still a mm -hmm. fact, you know. Uh, regardless of how long it takes, we have to finish. You know? mm -hmm. Regardless of... Uh, your knowledge of vocabulary, these are the rules. <laughs> it's just true. Moving on to the next one. Okay. <laughs> there is no one reason why people game. Very good. There is no one reason why. Yeah. So this is, this is tricky because here's a, a comprehension question for you. Is there one reason why people game? Is there many reasons why people game, or is there no reasons why people game? Which one is it? There are many. Yes, exactly. This is another turn of phrase. This is another way to say something that is tricky and will probably trick you when you're doing questions. Yeah. Really good one. Put it in your book. I think this is one to learn. Yeah. Um, also, so I remember you said to relieve stress. And please learn this one correctly. Yeah. So many, many people try to translate um, how they say it in their native tongue to, to English, and they always do it wrong. Yeah. It's not release stress, it's relieve. Yeah. You could say um, reduce stress at a pinch. But that, that not has a different same. meaning. Yeah, yeah, not quite the same thing, yeah. So yeah. how would we relieve stress? What, what context would you use it in? I think Phil relieves stress by drinking. Um, <laughs> uh, I relieve stress by gaming. You know, yeah. if I'm stressed out, I go home and I game to relieve yeah. stress. And, yeah. if, and then if we said, you know, the company is trying to reduce a stress for its employees by... Um, doing something. Doing something. So it's, it's different because relieving stress is more of a hobby, uh, a mm -hmm. free time thing. And reduce stress is uh, basically to eliminate the things that bring you stress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's right. Yeah, I, I remember I've had a few students that get it this wrong. It happens all the time, yeah. especially with Chinese speakers. Yeah. Yes, Chinese speakers learning English, this is a really common problem. Yeah, they often confuse uh, stressed and stressful. I am stressful. No, I'm stressed. Mm -hmm. Sorry, this is my wife. <laughs> I need to tell her. Who's that. watching this? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there was another phrase. Uh, I don't know if it was the next on the list, but affliction. I heard. Ooh, that's a high level Very one. Very good word. 
Yes. Yeah, to, to be afflicted with something, uh, an affliction. So this is really talking about, we spoke about addictions before. Mm -hmm. Addictions are afflictions. It's one. So yeah. the affliction is the bigger category, mm -hmm. and addiction is one kind of yeah. affliction. So, so an affliction, you can be afflicted with a health problem, mm -hmm. afflicted a mental problem, a, a mental health problem, mm -hmm. uh, a, a colleague who you know doesn't shave. That could be an affliction too. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get you back sometimes. <laughs> um, and we spoke about addictions. So mm -hmm. an affliction, something um, negative in your life, sometimes mm -hmm. out of your control. Mm -hmm. An affliction, is that the noun, the verb, or the adjective? Well, I said an affliction, so it must be a noun. Is there a verb? Um, or, or to be afflicted. Mm -hmm. So it uses, what it, I suppose, like a, a verb, adjective, yeah. form, yeah. Uh, what about um, a noun for the person? Would we say afflictee? Or have I just created that word? I think you've created that word. Okay, don't, don't learn that, that word. Don't that. <laughs> an afflictor? An afflictee? Mm. No. no. <laughs> um, and right next to this word was above mentioned. Okay. Yeah. And this is a referencing word. These mm. are really important with both your writing and your reading, yeah. where it's connecting to something that was previously said. Yeah, and this is true. probably the most literal referencing word ever. Above mentioned means mentioned above. Yeah. That means that it is something that was said before. Yeah. Now the trick here is in this sentence, yes, some of it, uh, some do it because of the above mentioned affliction. What does that mean? What does above mentioned affliction mean? Well, you were referring to what we said before. Which was? Was the addiction, right? Yep, the addiction yeah. to gaming. So the above mentioned affliction means the addiction to Ten gaming. Points. That is <laughs> referencing. Yeah. And so I think you could, in theory, put this anywhere in your writing. Mm -hmm. But I, I think this would go very nicely, particularly in a conclusion for a, an opinion essay. Mm -hmm. Very nicely there. And you could, of course, use it anywhere else that you're referencing. Especially in your bodies. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, body paragraphs. It doesn't mean in your actual body. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> the above mentioned <laughs> head. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, one more thing for referencing. In the exact same sentence, yes, some do it because of the above mentioned affliction. What does it mean? Well, it's, again... This is referencing. Referencing, so do it. In this case, it's gaming. Exactly. Yeah. So it's this, the topic of this, this text, in fact. One trick you can be doing is when you're reading for fun, which you should be doing, not just IELTS, read a book, a novel, or newspapers. Mm. Every time you see referencing, circle it, and then draw an arrow that connects it to what it's talking about. This is where a lot of students struggle, because yeah. you need to understand the referencing to understand the text. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good tip there. Okay, so what about grammar for this paragraph? Anything that you would highlight? Anything that they can steal to put into their own writing? Mm, there are some sentence frames. If we start from the bottom, yeah. for every negative, there is a positive. Mm -hmm. You can change this very easily. For every negative reason, there is a positive reason. Yeah. So for every negative trait, there is a positive trait. For you every crime, there's a punishment. Mm -hmm. you know. That's a really nice sentence frame you yeah. can steal. Any others that you can think of? Um, so I like the fact that we were using the phrase, others do it. Mm. So where you were talking about one group of people and then use others to introduce the, the next group of people. Yes. I think that's, that's a good sort of phrasing to have there. Can you give us an example? Um, so let's say some people do. Some people drive on the left side of the road. Others drive on the right, mm -hmm. and that can cause a lot of accidents if they do it at the same time. <laughs> I hope you have a picture that shows them exactly what you I, said. I, I was getting into the car the other day, and my wife was driving, and, and I was paying for the parking, and I walked to the wrong side of the road. I, like I didn't know which side was the driver's side. Because I, naturally in my head, I'm driving He's on the British. English side. Yes. <laughs> and we don't drive on that side of the road. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, we have another relative clause here. Um, this is, I'll read you the sentence, and then I want you to tell me, is it defining or non-defining? Okay. Others do it as a way to escape, diving deep into these fantasies, which is objectively dreadful. 
So which is objectively dreadful? That's a relative clause. Is it defining or non-defining? What do you say? Well, I think we could take that out and it would still make sense. So exactly. that's non-defining. It's non-defining. Yeah. Okay. So now, can we see that? Does it have a comma? It does have a comma. Yeah. You can't see it unless you're reading along. <laughs> we, yes. Okay. Um, and this is another nice sentence frame, which is objectively dreadful. You can change the adjectives at the end, mm. just if you're adding an extra comment about something you said before. Yeah, so objectively. So mm -hmm. that means... The everyone agrees. Everyone agrees with society. And the, the difference if it's just for you would be... Subjectively. Yeah, so these are also good phrases. Yeah. We use objectively a lot more, though. Yeah, because, well, we're not so selfish, are we, Michael? <laughs> No, it's true. It's going to make a lot more sense in your writing yes. to talk about society's general, I would yes. think, general ideas. So, Michael writes a lot of the content, which is objectively dreadful. Although, um, now I think about it, we could, in an IELTS um, sort of context, use subjectively for an opinion. Mm -hmm. If you're writing an opinion, an opinion essay in the conclusion, or you're exploring an opinion uh, in both sides of an argument and then giving your opinion. You could use that. True. Yeah. But I feel like that would definitely be in a much higher level essay, well, like an eight or a nine. Well, this is, some of you might be watching and be able to use that, yeah. That's true. Welcome. Remember to like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've got another paragraph for there us. There is one more. Let's go through it. There are so many reasons to game, so much to take away from it. A lot of people see it already. We are seeing schools add gaming to their curriculum to make content more engaging. Many people make new friends by gaming or strengthen friendships. So many games are team games and as a result players develop these skills. On top of all of this there is research that points to it developing hand-eye coordination and cognitive functions. There are just so many benefits. Okay. So, um, picking out some vocabulary from there. Uh, this word, curriculum. Mm. Very good, yeah. So, um, a synonym for curriculum could be syllabus. It, they're slightly different, I know. Mm -hmm. But curriculum is... What is taught in the class. What is taught there. And a syllabus is throughout the year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. For me, they're quite similar. I wouldn't use them, you know, wouldn't interchange them, but this is what it means, curriculum. Yeah. Okay. And you um, also might know curriculum from the phrase curriculum vitae, CV in English, which in American, oh. which in American is resume. You didn't know that? No, I never made that connection, and I saw it so many times. Yeah. Right? Well, we this, just call it CV. I never think about what the acronym is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's, just like eat sports. Oh, mm. man. But I think in American English, you use the word resume quite a lot. We do. And Technically, they are different things, mm. but yeah, a lot of people use them interchangeably. And, and in the UK, we have a CV if you're applying for a job. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I liked curriculum. That's a good... Content is also good. Yeah, content. Like the great content you're watching right now. <laughs> you also had en engaging. Mm. Very good adjective. So what's that mean? That means that it's interesting, and it makes you keep wanting to... Be, keep wanting to do it. Yeah. So I hope that these videos are engaging with our wonderful faces and funny jokes and that you are enjoying yourself. If something is engaging, that means you want to keep doing it. It also means you, you want to push the like button. I mean, it certainly does it for me. Huh? huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, what else did I see? Um, very, very good collocation. With? Which one? Can you guess which one I'm looking at? Uh, strength and friendships? Yes. Oh. You're too good, Michael. <laughs> strength Native speaker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> strength and friendships. Mm. This is a very good collocation. So it means to uh, improve a friendship, have a deeper relationship, mm -hmm. just to be better, best friends. Exactly. Yeah. Just like us, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm his only friend. <laughs> yeah, Facebook, one friend. <laughs> okay, um, what else would you pick out? What's a useful uh, um, phrase to learn? I would say this is kind of specific, mm. but hand-eye coordination. Yeah. That's uh, So if I throw a ball and you can catch it, you have good 
hand eye coordination or poor eye hand coordination. Because I'm not a gamer, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, true. But you could use this um, when you're talking about anything to do with sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, generally, um, any sports, you have some sort of hand eye coordination. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, tennis, definitely. And it's the same with gaming as well. Gaming, yeah. Like, you're looking at the screen and your mouse is clicking and you need to be able to connect it. Mm -hmm. I don't personally believe that this is true, but yeah. Um, well, you say I'm not a gamer, but the games I like were uh, flight sims. And I actually got my flying license a few years ago to fly little planes. And I remember going for a, a, like a pleasure flight when I was about 20 or something, and I used to play a lot of games. And the, the, the pilot there, the, the instructor, was uh, mocking me. And he was like, oh, when you want to turn left, you move the stick, or of course you press F5. And I went and did the, the, the test, and I was flying very, very well. And he had to eat his words. He had to tell me, actually, I'm sorry, you're quite good. And I think this was from playing oh, the game. Yeah. So I, I do think it's valid. You can learn practical skills. I do think it's valid. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Do you agree with me, or do you think Michael's right? Leave us a comment. One last one is yeah. cognitive functions. Cognitive functions. So cognitive uh, is to do with the way you think, how you mm -hmm. process information. So this is a, a very high-level word. Mm -hmm. yeah. The most difficult thing about using this word is how do you spell it? <laughs> well, we can break that down, right? How many syllables? Cognitive. How do you spell cog? C-I-G. Ni. N-I. Tiv. T-I-V-E. Hey! <laughs> Knocked out of the park. <laughs> so, um, we actually talked about this in another video. Yeah. If you have trouble spelling, one of the best things you can do is learn to count syllables. Yeah. It doesn't work with every English word. No. no. Especially words that we got from French. But um, it's, it makes spelling a lot easier. Yeah. This is a, for me, this is a key skill that you need to learn because there are so many of my students who hear the right word in a listing, for example, and then just spell it wrong. Mm -hmm. And especially writing as well. Yeah. You've got to practice that. So if ever you get corrections for your writing or you're looking back at your listening answers and you get a word wrong, you've spelt it wrong, pull it on your list and learn how to spell it. True, true. It might come back up to bite you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so anything else to do with grammar that you'd pick out? I didn't think the grammar in this one was too difficult. No. Um, but there was a good phrase I liked, on top of all this. I was also looking at this yeah. one. What this, does that mean? So on top of all this, it means you've given uh, perhaps a list of reasons for something, and then you're stating perhaps a distinct reason or an mm -hmm. important reason, or even for a, a final thought. So yes. it's, it's really good for supporting sentences. Uh, and on top of all this, this is actually a CC word. Yeah. So th what do you mean by CC exactly? Uh, this means cohesion and coherence. OK, so this is one of the things that uh, one of the gradings on writing, right? Yep, yeah. exactly. So you need to be able to connect your ideas together yeah. there. And to a certain extent, you could also benefit from this in your speaking. Yeah. OK, I look forward <laughs> to seeing you guys next time. I've been Mike. And I've been Phil, and this has been the IELTS Grind. Peace.